Hey everyone, welcome to a new video series on reinforced concrete. This is the first video posted in the area of reinforced concrete, so here we go. We're going to start off by talking about steel and concrete, the material them themselves. We're going to just discuss the materials and see what we're dealing with. So, let's start off with concrete. So a brief overview to begin. Concrete is the most common construction material in the world. I don't care what they say, what metric, it's everywhere. It's been used for a long, long time. Maybe you want to say wood, but I'm going concrete. And it's big draw. The thing that it really has going for it is that it has excellent compressive strength. Okay, it's very good in compression. But additionally, it's also extremely durable. You don't need to maintain it. And, um, and it's cheap. The materials are, are readily available. So let's discuss these materials, the composition. First off, we have air. Regular concrete is about 5% air. Just to clarify, these two bars here, those are just two different ways we're going to slice up this composition. So this bottom bar, concrete is made of three things. It's 5% air. Next, we have the coarse aggregate, which is like a gravel or stone, and it's about 40% coarse aggregate, and then the remaining 55% is this thing we call mortar. Oh yeah, I'll add, this is by volume, that's why we have air. If it was by mass, we wouldn't. So three main things, air, coarse aggregate, and 55% mortar, all right? That mortar is made up of three other things, and one of those is fine aggregate, or sand. So about 25% of the overall volume of concrete is that sand. Then we have 18% water. And lastly, the thing that makes it all happen, 12% cement. We could also have some chemical or mineral admixtures in there, depending on what we want to do with our mix. But this is the basic concrete. And note that 65% by volume of this composition of concrete is the coarse aggregate and the fine aggregate. Okay, just super readily available gravel and sand. You know, you just find that just when you're walking down the street. Oh, found a pebble. Nice. Found a little bit of part of concrete, I guess. So if we if we were to draw it out, uh, you know, if you take a slice of some concrete, if you cut it open, you'd see, you'd be able to see the coarse aggregate. They're, they're, typically the little stones are about 4 to 20 millimeters. So for those imperial folk, that's like a very small amount to about an inch. Uh, okay. So, and then mortar. Mortar, you'd see it's that matrix that holds the coarse aggregate in place. Okay, so now let's talk about the compressive behavior of concrete, all right? So I've drawn here a cylinder, and this cylinder, it's, a, it's basically a cylinder of concrete that you would cast along with whatever else you're, you're making, so you can test it. And so it's put in a test frame, and um, the test you're performing is called a uniaxial compression test, and it's always performed at 28 days. So looking at this curve, it's a parabolic shape, and the top of it, we're going to call F prime C, okay? The prime is there because it's saying that we perform this test under certain conditions. And at the ending, we have this thing called a brittle failure, which just means that the concrete, it crushed, all right? It's not pretty, and it crushes, and the strain at which it crushes is epsilon Cu, or the concrete ultimate strain, and it's between 0.003 and 0.004. Okay, so it's, it doesn't have a lot of ductility. We can also draw a line from 0 up to 40% of F prime C, and then we can take the slope of that line, and that gives us the initial stiffness of the concrete. We can estimate the stiffness initially to be linear. So the F prime C again, the 28-day compressive strength, a regular value that you'd see for that, anywhere between 20 and 40 MPA. And again, Americans, that's about 5 KSI, all right? And then the stiffness, EC, the elastic modulus, that's what it's called. That's that initial stiffness. And then the, the other important thing is this crushing strain, the maximum strain that the concrete can handle. Okay, so moving along to the steel material. All right, so steel probably the second most common construction material. And really it's like an engineer's dream, you know, steel it's so well behaved. Uh, so let's talk about a little bit of what, what makes up steel and again, it's stress strain curve. 
So just an overview, steel is great in tension and compression, all right? Remember, concrete was just good in compression. It's actually pretty brutal in tension. Uh, and, and steel also, the drawback, I guess you could say, it requires a lot of maintenance, okay? You gotta paint it, feel really bad for those painters in San Francisco with the Golden Gate, you know? Um, you gotta paint it for corrosion protection. All right, so this first bar up here, we're gonna talk about the constituents or the composition or whatever C word of carbon steel. So it's 95% or more of iron, less than 2% carbon, but it's very sensitive to the carbon content. It drastically changes the steel material. And then there's other metals in there, silicone, phosphorus, manganese, manganese, you know. Then we got stainless steel, okay? So it's mostly iron again, but the key in stainless steel is you have this 12% chromium and then a little bit of nickel. The chromium is there and that gives it the protection against corrosion, all right? So stainless steel, it is a lot more expensive. Um, I mean, it's worth it for our cutlery, but I don't know, should we put it in our bridges? Or is it more expensive? That's really the question of the day, you know, because if you gotta go in and replace your carbon steel, you know, you gotta think about that, right? Who's gotta do that? That's annoying. Gotta go in, bust up the concrete. Anyways, so let's talk about the tension and compression stress strain curve. So I've drawn a super ugly little test sample here. It's in a wishbone shape. So this is kind of the, um, the same kind of test as compared to the cylinder test. But with steel, we don't need to do a cylinder or anything like that. We can just do, do these little teeny uh, wishbone tests, all right? So the thing about the steel curve is that it rides up very sharply up to a specific point, okay, FY. That is when the steel yields also labeled that epsilon y, and the slope of that initial steepness, that's ES, the modulus of elasticity for steel. You can see also we have this strain hardening where the material actually gets stronger with more strain, but typically we just ignore that, that extra little bit. It's too hard to account for in design. And then finally at the end here, the absolute uh, maximum strain is almost 10%, all right? So what can we say about steel after all of this? It's very stiff, meaning the modulus of elasticity is high, and it's also very ductile, all right? That means you're gonna get a lot of warning before failure, so that's a great thing. All right, so now we've learned a bit about concrete and steel. Now it's time to really figure out their strengths and weaknesses, compare them, and really decide who's the final victor. So, concrete, great compressive strength, and eh, negligible tensile strength. Ductility, also pretty brutal. It crushes, it's very violent and ugly. Durability, pretty good, all right? The uh, Coliseum's still standing, good enough for me. Maintenance, pretty good. Inexpensive, remember, gravel and sand, you find it walking down the street. And it's very fire resistant. Have you ever tried to burn a rock? It's pretty tough. Now for the steel, all right? So I'm gonna kind of map each one of these over. Compressive strength, yup, good. Tensile strength, yup. Good ductility. So it, it, it excels in two areas where concrete is not good at. And then we get into some of these other things. Steel, poor durability uh, because of corrosion. You need to maintain it. It's expensive to produce. And it's not very fire resistant. And just a side note, neither of these materials are great for the environment. That's a very sad reality. Hopefully we can develop better systems in order to produce them. Anyways, oh yeah, and another note, stainless steel does have good durability, but it's expensive. So, and here we go, hold on to your minds. If we put the steel in the concrete, specifically in the tension zones, we can actually create a setting where the concrete protects the steel from corrosion and from fire. But because the steel's there, we'll have some ductility, all right? And we'll put it in where we need the tension. So by combining these two materials, we've just thought of something referred to as reinforced concrete, all right? And this is reason to celebrate because we have a material that is Durable, I can't spell, so I'll give it another shot. Durable, we have a material that is strong, both tension and compression, 
we have a ductile material with warning before failure and it doesn't cost too much because most of the mass is the cheap concrete. Okay, so this is really a big deal. So I'm drawing some fireworks here. I hope you like them. And that's it. Thanks for watching.